Number 16. Olympic ice skaters are able to spin about five revolutions per second. What is their angular velocity in radians per second? All right, so let's first take a look at letter A here. So it's a very straightforward conversion, right? We're basically doing five uh, revolutions per second, and we have to convert that into radians per second, so we have to get rid of the revolution, so they go on the in the denominator because it unit originates in the numerator, right? So mathematically, it's like a division. We would divide out uh, that unit. And then I'm going to put radians in the numerator, as long as I do know a relationship between radians and revolutions. And I do, right? It's two pi radians for every one revolution. So that gets rid of the revolutions. And notice I'm left with radians per second. All right. So basically, this is equal to uh, 10 pi, right? Radians per second. And just getting it down to a decimal, we could think about this as 3131.4, well, let's say. 31.4 radians per second. Okay, so this would be then the uh, angular velocity. Also note that that variable is omega. All right, so letter B now. What is the centripetal acceleration if the skaters no of the skaters no excuse me if it is 0.12 meters from the axis of rotation? What that basically means, right, is that the radius of rotation is 0.12. Okay. So they basically gave me the radius of rotation, 0 0.120. Um, and we're trying to find the centripetal acceleration. So I take a look on my right-hand side. I'm going to start with a formula that contains centripetal acceleration. I notice it's found in both of these formulas. But one I'm going to use over the other because I'm realizing that they did give me a radius, right? So I'm probably going to be using this um, equation right here. So let's write that down, that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. So if I know these two pieces, right, I can solve, but I don't. All right, I don't know the tangential velocity. No big deal. What we do now is we look to find a formula that has tangential velocity in it. And maybe within that formula, I'll highlight it here on the right-hand side, maybe within that particular formula, there are R variables that we do know. And actually, right, there is. We do know the uh, radius, and we do know the angular velocity. Guess what we just found in part A? Angular velocity. So simply now do a quick substitution here. So I'm going to plug in radius times omega, and that whole thing is going to be squared all over the radius. Right, simplifying this, I've done this in a, a lot of other problems. This simplifies down to radius times omega squared. All right, so now I have enough information, and here's the formula right, that I can now use to calculate my answer. Let's take a look. So we have centripetal acceleration is equal to the radius, which we found to be 0.120. That was in meters, so that's great. Multiplied by the angular velocity, and that must be in radians per second. We got that value before, 3.14. Don't forget to square it. So simply now the centripetal acceleration will be 31.4 squared times 0.12. All right, so 118, right? 118 meters per second squared. All right, so that takes care of letter B. All right, let's put a little box around that. All right, let's move on to letter C now. It says, an exceptional skater named Dick but uh, Button um, was able to spin much faster in the 1950s than anyone else, about nine revolutions per second. What was the centripetal acceleration of the tip of his nose, assuming it is at 0.12, uh, it is at a one point, uh, excuse me, a 0.12 meter radius? Okay. So you might say, well, can I just use a proportion here, maybe... Right, nine revolu this is a value of nine, this was a value of five, so maybe realizing that it's nine fifths greater, could I just take nine fifths of this value and uh, go about my business? And the answer would be no. All right, although the radii are the same, um, notice in my formula here what happens to the angular velocity? It's squared. So, knowing that though, what you could probably do is you could probably take this value and do nine-fifths squared of it. You could do that. I'm just going to work it out, though. All right? So let's do, so part C will be right here. Okay. Again, I'm going to use just this particular formula. I already found it, so I'm not going to derive it again. R times omega squared. And now I need to convert, basically, the nine revolutions per second into radians per second. That's easy, right? Nine revolutions per second. I already went over how to go about doing something like this. So I won't talk too much so you guys can do it out yourself. All right. So this would simply be 
18 pi or 18 times 3.14, 56.5. So this works out to be 56.5 uh, radians per second. All right, so this is the omega value, all right, for uh, Dick but uh, Button. Now, let's plug it in. So we have the radius was the same, 0 0.120, and now I'm going to do 56.5, 56.5, and square that. And now let's see what it is. So this is 56.5 squared, oops, 56.5 squared times 0.12. 383, 383, right, meters per second squared. That That is his centripetal acceleration. All right. So, um, yeah, so as you can see, it's more than, I mean, look at what it was before, right? And now the value is more than nine-fifths bigger, right? It's it's It went up by... It almost looks like th more than three times the amount. So if you actually took nine-fifths and squared it, let's see what we get. Nine over five, square that. Look at that, you get 3.24. If you take 3.24, multiply it by 118, voila. You get about 282 or 283, all right? Yeah, it's just slightly off because of the rounding. Anyway, easy enough. Let's move on to D. Comment on the magnitudes of the accelerations found. It is reputed that Button ruptured small blood vessels during his spins. So basically just relate this to G, okay? Um, meaning relate it to the force of gravity. So what I can do here for the first value, I can say, right, remember G is equal to A over 9.80. So the G's here is 118 over 9.80, okay? And this is 118 over 9.8. So 12, that's a lot. So 12 G's, okay? So that's how much, that's the centripetal acceleration related to how many times gravity it is. It's 12 times gravity. And uh, let's see what Mr. Button was. So we have G is equal to uh, 383 over 9.8. And again, you can just take you can just multiply by 3.24, the old value of G, meaning 12. You can take 12, multiply by 3.24, as we did before, but let's do 3 to 3 over 9.8. 39, right? 39.1. So 39.1 Gs. That is a tremendous, that's 40 times gravity, all right? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like you should be popping some blood vessels. Um, you know, it. I mean... Surprisingly, not passing out, right? I mean, that's a tremendous uh, G-force there. So in any case, um, that would be, you know, relating it to gravity. I mean, we're talking about 40 times the acceleration due to gravity here, right? So it is fairly significant. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and uh, tell your friends about us. Thank you. Bye.